Hello, welcome to 3.5, the last section from chapter 3. And this is equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. And so you've actually learned this before, learned this in algebra. So nothing too crazy. So let's talk about slope a little bit here. Slope is just the steepness of a line, right? It's how steep your stairs are, right? If, you're, if your stairs have like a really steep slope, um, it's going to be hard to climb them. Okay, you learn about this all the time in middle school. Uh, the equation is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You've also seen this. This shape is delta. It represents change a lot. So change in y over change in x, which is what the, the difference is here. Or you hear rise over run. These are all ways that you see slope written. Okay, you've done this many, many times before. Now let's find the slope of a line. So if I were you and you were confused at all, call one of these x1, y1, call one x2, y2, and go ahead and set up the slope formula. We use m, I'm trying to, I don't remember why, it's just very traditional. And so you go seven minus three over negative five minus two, or four over negative seven. So negative four sevenths, okay? So in middle school you learned all kinds of things about that, right? It's negative, so that means that the line's going down, okay? It's less than one, so it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, pretty flat, okay? Not, not quite, not quite level, but pretty flat. Things like that, okay? All things that you learned in middle school. So remind yourself about slope. Make, make sure you know this formula right here, okay? It'll be pretty important. All right, so the first theorem is the slope of parallel lines. So if we have two distinct non-vertical lines, the so vertical lines are undefined slope, they are parallel if and only if they have the same slope. So parallel lines have the same slope, and then it adds any two vertical lines are parallel because the, the vertical lines have an undefined slope. So they can't have the same slope, but they kind of do, right? They're both undefined. So if you want to see the proof of this, go check it out right here. It's on this page, but pretty simple. Okay, it says, what will the slope of the line parallel to y equals 4x plus 7 be and y? So the first thing you have to do is you have to know what the slope of this line is. Now, something pretty important, if you remember, y equals mx plus b is slope intercept form. Okay, you need it in this form to just be able to read off the slope. Okay, because in here, that m is the slope. And so if you can get it in this form, you can just tell me what the slope is right now. So what we have here is we have four. So the slope here is four. And so what slope would we need? We want a slope of m equals, and now based on this line right here, we need to be parallel, so it should be the same we want four as well, okay? Pretty simple, we need the same slope as this line, okay? Now for example, if you were given a line such as this, you were given something like this, negative four x plus y equals seven, okay? This is another example, very similar. It's the same line actually. This is now in standard form, okay? And so if you want to find the slope parallel to this, you need to first need to make sure it's in slope intercept form, okay? So it has to be y equals something x plus b. That's this form right here, okay? Get it in this form right there before you read off the slope or you're gonna be in a world of trouble, okay? So all you would do is you would add the 4x over and you would get y equals 4x plus seven and then you would work from there just as before. Okay, that's my big warning for that spot. Make sure it's in slope intercept form. But once you have it, par parallel lines have the same slope. Easy said, okay? On the same wavelength, we have the theorem about the slopes of perpendicular lines, okay? And so what it says is that two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if their product of their slopes is negative one, okay? Horizontal and vertical are obviously perpendicular. So what this means, we've heard before, is the slope of perpendicular lines is opposite reciprocals of one another, okay? So the idea is, so for example, if my slope is one half, the slope of the line perpendicular is m equal, so what you do is you flip it and add a negative, opposite reciprocal. So I flip it, if it's one half, it becomes two, and I put a negative out front, okay? And now, according to the theorem, if I take negative two times one half, certainly I get negative one half and we're good to go, okay? So flip it, add a negative. All right, let's use an example. Find the slope of the line that passes through the points, these two right here, 
then find the slope of the line perpendicular. So part A, we just need to find slope. So we do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we get 5 a's. So the slope is 5 a's, okay? So part B, if we want the slope of the line perpendicular, we need to do the opposite reciprocal. So simply put, flip it, add a negative. So it's 5 a's, flip it, 8 fifths, put a negative out front, that's it, okay? That's all there is to it. Nice and short video, nice and short section. You've learned this stuff in middle school before, and that finishes out chapter three. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, enjoy your week. Good luck on the quiz. Uh, I'll see you on Thursday and Friday.